Hi Mustangs, welcome to help. My computer hates me. I am Miss Samuelson for those of you who don't know me and I'm sorry that I can't be here for our first session of Mustang time. I'm actually at a computer conference right now. I'm hoping that you guys can learn some basic tools that you can use in all of your classes or get help on any projects that you might be working on and need technology for. So the sub is going to give you guys a index card, an index card. Um, if you would write your name on it and write down something that you are hoping to get out of here, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Once you log into one of the computers on campus, you're going to see some icons on the left. You're going to see your desktop here with the um, LCISD information. Down here at the bottom left, the window icon, this is kind of your start area. Over here on the left, these are all the software programs that are going to be installed on your computer. It's not the same on every computer. You have some shortcuts to some commonly used um, software programs and then some that LCISD recommends. So if you go to class link and log in with your LCISD, oops, let's try that again, um, and do that with your LCISD username, email address, and password, then it's going to give you access to all of the apps that you use. So from here you can log in to Spark, Canvas, um, Office, etc. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and um, click on Office 365. Um, by the way, your email address is going to be your username at students.lcisd.org. So I'll give you a few seconds to get that typed in. I'll make it a little bit bigger just to make sure that you guys can see it. Your username, the same way you log onto the computer, the at symbol is the shift and the two on your keyboard, students.lcisd.org. Okay. So teachers have a slightly different email address, so don't copy mine because it won't get you anywhere. Now, once you get into Office 365, you will see all of the apps by Microsoft, okay? And you're going to wind up at some point in time, whether it's this year or another year, you're going to wind up using the majority of these. Outlook is your email program. OneDrive is where you should be saving all of your files for all of your classes. Word is a word processing program. Excel is a spreadsheet. PowerPoint is a presentation software. OneNote is a great way to be able to do note taking and share it with people. Um, SharePoint is for um, web stuff. I've never used Teams. Um, Class Notebook is part of OneNote. Sway is another great presentation program. And then Forms, which you probably won't use. That's probably more um, for teachers. So let's go ahead and start by clicking on the OneDrive. And when you click on the OneDrive, it's going to open. And if you have any files that have been saved in your OneDrive, as I do, um, then you're going to see them there. Now, every time you log into a different computer, you don't see, I mean, you see the word OneDrive, but notice how there's nothing there, okay? And that's because I have not synced my OneDrive with my real OneDrive, okay? So what I have to do is I have to open Office 365, go to OneDrive like I've done, and then right here you're going to see the sync button. And when you click sync, 
you're going to want to open Microsoft OneDrive. And it goes through, it's going to prompt you to sign in, but obviously you've already done that, so your email address should be there. And then it's going to go through and um, just give you some information, telling you where it's found, because it's downloading stuff to your computer. It's allowing you to check files that you want to sync. I keep them all checked. And it tells you in order to add them to your OneDrive folder, all you have to do is click and drag. It tells you that you can share files and folders easily. And that you can get OneDrive for your phone. Now this is great because a lot of times you might have a project where you have taken video on your phone and you need to upload it to a computer. This is the best way to do it. If you will click on Get OneDrive for your phone, a new window is going to pop up in a moment. And that new window is going to ask you for your phone number. I'm not typing mine in, but if you type, if you put in your phone number, um, the area code followed by the next seven digits, and include text link, it's going to give you um, or text you a download link for your OneDrive, which is going to make it easy for you to transfer files and see files on your phone. So that's a great thing about the OneDrive. Also now, when I open this folder, oh, whoops, I haven't clicked on it yet, sorry. Um, sorry, my video paused and I didn't realize it. Um, you have to go back after you put in your phone number, you have to go back and click on the next button so it will open your OneDrive. And when it does, you are going to see OneDrive, Lamar Consolidated, and then all of your files that you have saved over here. This is important to know that just because you do this on one computer doesn't automatically make this appear on every computer that you log in at. You always have to sync whenever you are at a new computer, otherwise you won't see your files here. Now, um, it's good if you um, organize your OneDrive with folders. Um, I recommend that maybe you make um, a folder for each class you're in, and then at the end of the year you can put those classes in another folder for 2018 to 2019 and you can kind of move them out of the way because if you just have random files in there it's going to make it hard for you to find things. You can create new folders by right clicking with your mouse and choosing new folder and see I have now a new folder. Because it's blue it's going to allow me to type so I'm just going to go ahead and type in Mustang time since that's the class that this is for. Um, and then I can double click and I can save things to this folder. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close the OneDrive. Um, you should go ahead and make sure that you have your, um, have your link coming to you via text message and get that downloaded. Okay. Now, Outlook, this is your email program, okay? And when it opens up, it's going to have email. Now, one of the things that you need to know is that you um, are gonna wind up probably with lots of emails from teachers that you didn't realize you had, okay? So this is a good time for you to go through and clean up email. So if I click on an email and I, you know, read through it and I'm like, okay, I don't need that anymore, I click on delete. Okay. And then I have to, I can go through if there's something important like this right here, I know I need to do. So I'm going to flag that message so that I can make sure that I complete that. And then I can delete others. Now, I can click on this new button up here if I want to send an email. Now, our school email is a little bit, or our district email is a little bit weird in the fact that we search by first name typically, although this 
um, drop down here seems to allow us to search by last name. Um, but anyway, um, you're going to need to kind of know your teacher's email address. And sometimes the email address is the first initial followed by the last name. Other times it's first name dot last name. Like that's what mine is. Okay. But as you start typing it, once you've done it once, um, it's going to save in your suggested contacts where it's going to be easy for you to find again. If you're emailing a teacher, you should always give it a um, something in the subject line um, so that, um, let's say, missing assignment. Okay, that way a teacher knows that it's important and not just some piece of junk mail. And then you should type it properly, um, obviously, and make sure that it's something that they understand. Okay, um, and then you can click the send button. If you need to attach your assignment, you click on the little paper clip and you can attach from computer or cloud. If you need to insert an image, you can do that here. Um, you probably don't need to insert emojis, but it's there also. Okay. Um, there's a send button here and a send button here. Notice there's a paper clip here and a paper clip here. Either way, you can attach it. Okay. Um, to get back to my office apps, I can click here. I can click here to go back. Now, um, these apps are pieces of software, which if you don't have them at home, this is what's wonderful about our Office 365. You have access to this on the, the cloud version, okay, the OneDrive version. Um, and so you can click here and you can actually work in Microsoft Word online and you have all the same tools, all the same ribbons, etc. And you can save in your OneDrive. Same thing with the other programs. You could create, whoops, let me, you could create a spreadsheet again that is done via the web. And so you don't actually have to have those pieces of software loaded on your computer, okay? So you can use these district versions online and you don't have to buy it for your computer. Okay, I'm going to close those tabs because I'm not actually going to create anything there. And um, I can just click here to go back to Office 365 and I can keep that open. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and go back to my class link. If your class link closed, you can come to it down here. And via your class link, um, I said you could get to your Office 365, but also you can get to Canvas, which is um, used by most of the teachers. Um, when you're logged into class link, it tries to log you into everything else so you don't have to do it more than one time. Okay. Um, if you were to have gone to Office 365 or Canvas without class link, it just is going to prompt you to log in there. Okay. So that's what that does. It just saves you a login step. So in Canvas, you should see your dashboard of all of your different classes that you are currently enrolled in. Um, over on the right hand side, you're going to have um, to do lists, which basically is assignments that your teachers have assigned from your various classes. And you can click on that. If you click on your class, okay, you should see information there. Now, dashboard again is where you're going to find all of them. And I have just found advisory. I didn't realize it was there and it's blank at the moment, but I will add information to this for you guys to be able to access. And make sure that I complete that and then I can delete others. Now I can click on this new button up here if I want to send an email. Now, our school email is a little bit, or our district email is a little bit weird in the fact that we search 
by first name typically, although this um, drop down here seems to allow us to search by last name. Um, but anyway, um, you're going to need to kind of know your teacher's email address and sometimes the email address is the first initial followed by the last name. Other times it's first name dot last name. Like that's what mine is. Okay. But as you start typing it, once you've done it once, um, it's going to save in your suggested contacts where it's going to be easy for you to find again. If you're emailing a teacher, you should always give it a um, something in the subject line um, so that, um, let's say, missing assignment. Okay, that way a teacher knows that it's important and not just some piece of junk mail. And then you should type it properly. Um, obviously, and make sure that it's something that they understand, okay? Um, and then you can click the send button. If you need to attach your assignment, you click on the little paper clip, and you can attach from computer or cloud. If you need to insert an image, you can do that here. Um, you probably don't need to insert emojis, but it's there also, okay? Um, there's a send button here and a send button here. Notice there's a paper clip here and a paper clip here. Either way, you can attach it. Okay. Um, to get back to my office apps, I can click here. I can click here to go back. Now, um, these apps are pieces of software, which if you don't have them at home, this is what's wonderful about our Office 365. You have access to this on the, the cloud version, okay, the OneDrive version. Um, and so you can click here and you can actually work in Microsoft Word online and you have all the same tools, all the same ribbons, etc. And you can save in your OneDrive. Same thing with the other programs. You could create, whoops, let me, you could create a spreadsheet, again, that is done via the web. And so you don't actually have to have those pieces of software loaded on your computer, okay? So you can use these district versions online and you don't have to buy it for your computer. Okay, I'm going to close those tabs because I'm not actually going to create anything there. And um, I can just click here to go back to Office 365 and I can keep that open. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and go back to my class link. If your class link closed, you can come to it down here. And via your class link, um, I said you could get to your Office 365, but also you can get to Canvas, which is... Um, used by most of the teachers. Um, when you're logged into ClassLink, it tries to log you into everything else so you don't have to do it more than one time, okay? Um, if you were to have gone to Office 365 or Canvas without ClassLink, it just is going to prompt you to log in there, okay? So that's what that does. It just saves you a login step. So in Canvas, you should see your dashboard of all of your different classes that you are currently enrolled in. Um, over on the right-hand side, you're going to have um, to-do lists, which basically is assignments that your teachers have assigned from your various classes, and you can click on that. If you click on your class, okay, you should see information there. Now, dashboard, again, is where you're going to find all of them, and I have just found advisory. I didn't realize it was there, and it's blank at the moment, but I will add information to this for you guys to be able to access. So you'll get, a, uh, get an index card that I'd like you to put your name on and um, put any ideas that you have for things that you would like me to cover that you need help with. 
um, whether it's just extra time working on a project that needs technology or um, a specific type of technology or just basic stuff like I covered in the earlier part of the video. Write that down and let me know so that I can work on getting that done for you. Um, when you are finished, make sure that you X out of programs, close them. And this is close up here, the red X. Um, this one here is um, maximize and restore. And then this one is minimize. Okay, and it's the same way for all of your programs. So I'm going to go ahead and X out of mine. And when you have X out of everything, oops, I'm going to X out of that too. Um, you can come down here to the window. And right here, the third button up is how you sign out. Okay, you don't need to restart or shut down. You simply need to sign out so that whoever is here next um, can come in and log on to their computer. And once you have signed out, go ahead and put your headphones back on the monitor. Um, and then you can just work on something quietly until class is over.